So we are going to take a look at a 1080p gaming monitor today which has an IPS panel with a refresh rate of 75 hertz. And I thought that it was really great to have a monitor like this available at this price point. But it turns out that it was actually too good to be true. And this monitor does have some serious issues. Hey guys, I am Siddharth and this is LG 24MP59G review. The assembly of this monitor is pretty simple. Just take it out of the box, fix this part into the base of the stand and then fix the stand to the monitor. You get a power adapter which does not have a brick at center which is nice. You get an HDMI cable inside. You get this clip for cable management and you also get the drivers in a CD if you have an optical drive. The overall look of this monitor is probably the best thing about it. It has a very smart and sleek look for a gaming monitor and it doesn't look boring or cheesy. So it will also fit very well in an office. It is fairly thin but it doesn't have a bezel-less design that some monitors in this price range have which I don't mind but thinner bezels do look nice. This monitor doesn't support VESA mounting which sucks because this stand doesn't offer any kind of adjustment whatsoever and being able to adjust at least the tilt angle is something that I consider necessary. For the inputs, you have VGA, HDMI and DisplayPort so you can run it with older and newer computers. You of course have a port for power and you also have a 3.5mm jack for audio with headphones or speakers. This monitor doesn't have inbuilt speakers which is what I prefer. The monitor is controlled completely by the joystick under the panel and LG has one of the best ways to control the settings on your monitor. So this system works really well and you also have the LG software to adjust the settings if you prefer that way of doing it. This is a 24 inch Full HD IPS display which is nothing special but it does have a refresh rate of 75Hz which wasn't available in this price range earlier. 75Hz is a decent step up from 60Hz it is very noticeable even when moving your mouse on the screen and while gaming it also makes a difference. And you do get a taste of higher than 60Hz refresh rate without spending much which is a nice trend to see in newer Full HD monitors and it also doesn't require a very powerful GPU. But you cannot overclock it even a little. It just shows that the display signal is out of range even at 80Hz. And I used to frequently overclock my BenQ 60Hz VA panel to 75Hz while gaming. So 75Hz refresh rate is not that special. This is an IPS panel which covers over 99% of sRGB color gamut. But out of the box, color accuracy was an issue. And I had to calibrate this by adding 10% to the blue channel and reducing 3% of the red channel to get rid of the warmer than neutral color tone on the display. So this can be used for content creation but you will have to know how to calibrate the display and have a reference point like my 4K IPS monitors at the back. But most people buying this wouldn't have that. So you can just try my settings and see if it feels more neutral. So after doing all of that, the colors do seem to be pretty nice and saturated and it does deliver to the expectations of an IPS display. 250 nits of brightness is plenty and I keep it around 30% while using. And a 1000 to 1 contrast ratio and very good viewing angles which this panel has are typical for IPS panels. It has a 5 millisecond of grey to grey response time which is fine for gaming and it also has 1 millimeter and it also has a 1 millisecond response time mode with motion blur reduction which makes the display visibly flicker and also makes the games and moving objects on the screen look worse than how they look with motion blur. So that is useless. And there are other gaming features like black stabilizer which brightens the darker parts of games which I personally never used in the two years with these monitors at back. But this monitor allows you to display a crosshair on the screen. So if you want to take those no scope shots in games, you can cheat without using a marker or sticking something on the monitor. So this is the only gaming feature that I think can actually be useful. And it also supports AMD FreeSync which you can take advantage of if you are running an AMD GPU. And now let's come to the biggest issue that this monitor has and that is the terrible backlight bleed on both of its sides. 
Now, IPS panels are known to have some IPS glow, but this is extraordinarily terrible and it is pretty noticeable whenever you have anything dark going on the screen. And you do notice it while playing games or watching dark scenes in videos. And I really didn't expect this from LG. It is not noticeable in general desktop operation and it is also not visible when you don't have dark scenes in games. But it is disappointingly bad when you see it and this is something you will just have to get used to if this is going to be your primary monitor. There is also two bright white spots on the panel and you also see faint vertical lines in orange and blue colors which doesn't bother me but it is noticeable. And all these issues are not because I received a defective unit. Because if you check out the reviews of this on Amazon, you will see that other people are also facing these issues. So overall, I don't know if I can recommend this monitor. While I think that it offers a good display quality and features for the price, and 75Hz refresh rate on its IPS panel with its sleek design are nice, you will just have to consider whether the issues that I talked about are something that will be deal breaking for you. If this is going to be your primary monitor, then I would recommend searching for alternatives and see if you can get the same feature set without these issues. This could be the best value monitor for someone who wants to do some content creation alongside gaming, but I haven't done much research on monitors in this price range and I would really recommend going for higher resolution monitors if you can afford that because now the prices are not as bad as they used to be. So that was it for this video. If you did decide to buy this monitor, I would recommend doing that with my affiliate links in the video description. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you understand the pros and cons of this monitor and subscribe to the channel with bell icon if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one.